So with no tension on the packings, because remember if I screw that up real tight, I'll squash the packings and I won't get the piston through. So with no torque on the packings whatsoever, put your pump body up on its side, very gently, put your finger in there so that you can feel your piston come through, like so. Piston slides through the packings, and there we are. It started in the barrel for us, and we could do this up. And the piston's poking through there, I haven't damaged anything, nothing's damaged. So now that I've started this back up into the into the body, I need to do it up. So ultimately I can do that up by hand until I get to the nylon o-ring. Once I reach the nylon o-ring, that means it's hitting the taper on the seat and I'll need a little bit of extra tension on it or torque to be able to squash it into the taper. So wind it up and like I said, it's a, it's a fine thread. This is coarse, that was fine. So therefore it'll take it quite a bit more to wind it into place. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to torque this into place by squashing that O-ring. So it's not going to take excessive force to do that. So I'm squashing the O-ring into, into the seat now, like so. Slide it back over, and there it is, it's back in the seat. So remember what I said, there's a pin that has to go through here and marry with the flat section of this particular cylinder wall. So how do I find that? Well, what I need to do is apply some force now until it, it, it has a sufficient torque to either flatten it out or bring it back. So the beauty of this is I can now turn this cylinder wall in the housing according to the taper requirement. That seal is going to seal this cylinder up in there and I need to get that pin back in because this pin is the only keeper for this entire cylinder wall. So the flat section of the cylinder needs to marry with the pin. So you just adjust it round until you get the flat section to marry with the pin without damaging that thread. That looks about right. And so I don't damage anything, gently sit that there for the moment. Now this pin, what I suggest you do is definitely put some anti-seize on this pin, primarily because it is open to the weather it is in a piece of cast and it does have a tiny little ball bearing in there which has a spring under it so we want that to depress and go into that particular slide section or flat section of the cylinder wall. Now if I tap this, uh oh there's resistance, so just back it off a fraction and make sure that you're going to pick up the flat section. Now this is something I suggest you take your time with, don't try and rush it because if you do, you'll just ultimately end up bending the pin. So just turn it back until you can get what you think is about straight and try again. Tap, tap, tap. There's no resistance. And just to ensure there's no resistance, what you can do is just keep moving this back and forth. Any resistance? None whatsoever. There you are, as easy as that. So this pin does have a keeper and it's hanging on the stem bolt and there's a little retainer goes on that. So it's a bit of 316 wire that holds that in place so that if you do take the pin out, you don't lose it. So here we are, we've got the piston back in. Now's the time to be very careful of this particular ring land. So what I suggest you do is, now that you've got all that weight and it's top heavy, is put a piece of rag under there so you don't damage the bottom of it. So we've got our tension gland nut here that we need to put some tension on. How much tension do we put on there? To be quite honest with you, on a new install like this, you'll nip it up until it, you feel a fair bit of resistance. That's plenty. Once you run this for the day, you will check that tension again with no pressure on the cylinder. Because if there's pressure in this chamber, you won't be able to turn that anyway. So with no pressure on this, by dumping the valve, you release the pressure in the chamber, then you've got some chance of pulling some torque back on those packings. So what else goes in there? Well, of course, once we install it, we'll put throat seal oil in there and that will lubricate those packings. Now, in the kit comes all these 
three different types of, of uh, dust seals. Which one do I use? Well, basically what you'll find is this one's too small. Does that fit anything? No, not really. Does this one fit? It's, it's got, again, it's a chevron type seal, but it pushes into a ring land. So all we're doing is we're pushing it into the ring land and you hear it click into place. Click, 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 there it is. So it's just a dust cap. That's all it does. It's just a dust cap. And you can see the two cutouts there. That's how you can lubricate it. So we put a little bit of lubrication in there. There's no point in filling that wet cup up and trying to put it on the machine, primarily because it'll all run out. So the one thing you must remember is to lubricate or com complete the whole process by filling that well with oil prior to operation. So if we spin it around, we've got our filter cavity, the filter we've cleaned, remember the stem must be clean, there you are, all the flutes are clean in the stem, the filter's clean. The one thing I have done though is I've touched it with, with Vaseline or lubricant. Does it matter? Not really because I still have to flush all that lubrication I put on the piston, the packers. So I can put this back in because I know that I'm going to flush the whole thing with solvent. So push it home. Remember the spring inside this cap has to be free and be able to push that into the seat. Now the one thing you can replace here in this kit is that O-ring itself. So what's the easiest way to get that O-ring off? Can I, can I use a, a knife? Can I use a screwdriver? A little bit of a screwdriver, have a bit of a dab at it. What about a hammer? Give it a bash. If you try all those, you'll damage that ring land edge again. And again, the pressure will escape out that edge. So if you can't get it off with your fingers, what I suggest to do is use a small screwdriver or a pick and get underneath the O-ring and flick it off. Ultimately, the majority of them will come off with your fingernails. So reassembly, make sure those ring lands are nice and clean prior to putting your new O-ring back on there. So there you are, nice clean, clean ring land. A little bit of Vaseline, slide that round into the ring land itself, grab the appropriate one. So remember what I said, if you take them off and they're the second hand ones, get rid of them and put the new ones on. So here we are, a new one, nice new O-ring. So do I hit it back on there with a hammer? I'll get that back on there, not at all. Just use applied pressure and it'll click into the ring land, there you are. So now I've put that on there, what else do I need? Well, let's go back to the anti-seize that came with the kit. It's silver anti-seize. Slide it onto to the thread, like so. You can put the anti-seize up on that O-ring. I prefer to use a little bit of Vaseline. No need to put excessive amounts on there. So there you are, it's all lubricated. A bit of stuff in the thread, that, that'll squash into this marrying thread, like so. And away I go. It'll go all the way to the new O-ring and then it'll stop. See, all the way to the O-ring and then it stops. So how do I get it past that? Well, what you're going to actually do is you're going to squash that O-ring into the taper again. So being very careful of the end of your pump. Use your C-section spanner and away you go. Tighten it up. So you notice I put all this back together before I put that back in there because how much would that impede progress if I'm trying to do this up? with that there. So the filter housing is the last thing you put it back on the top of the pump, like so. Now is there any need to fill this pump with paint or solvent or to prime it? Absolutely no need whatsoever. The pump itself, what you'll do is now you've done a new installation or a repair, is that you'll make sure that when you start the air motor for this pump, it won't suck it up immediately, so you'll do five or six revelations of the air motor itself to start the pump sucking the material into the pump itself. You can pre-prime the hose that feeds this. You can fill this with solvent to assist. So we will more than likely do that before we proceed with trying to utilize the pump itself. So another O-ring goes on this one here. What did I need? I need some Vaseline in there to ensure that the ring land's got some lubrication on it and check this one for damage and make sure there's no impregnation or dents in that ring land seal. 
environment. So there we go, we slide the, the seal back on there. So look, all you do is you start the seal in the ring land itself, like so. Push the torque to the face of it and click it on. Simple as that. So that one's ready to reinstall. So what I need now is just the foot valve. So we've got a foot valve. Here's one we prepared earlier, nice and clean. So I need back in there, I need a seat, which we've inspected, checked, make sure the tape is clean, the ball sits in there well. So we put that back in the housing. See, because it's nice and clean, it slides in there easily. Now what else we need is the keeper and a ball bearing. So the ball bearing goes in next. Does it matter if I get Vaseline all over the ball? Not really, because we're going to suck up some thinners before we start. So again, put the ball gently in the seat, hold it up like so. Yes, the ball sits in there centre beautifully. Now with this one here, there was two O-rings on there, one at the bottom, one at the top. I've slipped that one on there. We slip one more on there, so what do I need? A little bit more Vaseline in that ring land. Slide it around the ring land like so. Grab this and slide it on. Click, there it is. So there's the two. Now with this particular one, what I do do is I use a little bit of Vaseline around those. All good. What I suggest you do is use a little bit of anti-seize down this bottom one as well because it'll impede the development of paint down the bottom of this area because this one can be really difficult to get out. So say for example I turned it upside down and bashed it like you saw me do to make this shoot out. If you have a massive build up of paint around the top here, what you may find is you may have to put this in a vise and take this elbow off and then with a drift hitting the ball only not the seat you can drift that back out through the top. You'll mainly find that if the machine hasn't been cleaned appropriately during the course of its life or the course of the packers that now need replacing. So remember what I said about the seat? It's a double sided seat. We've picked the side that we wanted that was in there before that seemed fine. So we'll slide that back in there. Now we need the retainer. But the first of all, don't forget the ball bearing. Slide the ball bearing back but sit it up so the ball bearing sits in the seat. Now what we can do is we slide the keeper in with our anti-seize, make sure it's nice and square. Now, now that you've put new O-rings on there, you'll find that, oh, hang on, I can't push that back in like I did before. What's going on? I've got something wrong. Well, you haven't. What you're trying to do is you're trying to push new O-rings back into a cylinder. So what you can do is hold that up like so, and you can give it a little tap now what would I use? Wow, I just used the hammer on the top of these retainers? Absolutely not, you'll bust them off. So what I suggest you do, if you don't have a drift to put in there, you can use a screwdriver, just make sure you don't damage the threads, and start it by tapping it one, three different places. But just in behind those keepers is where I'd start it. So you, you'll tap that all the way home, in this case, what we'll do is we'll put it in the vise, like so. Open the vise, put it like so, and there we are. So it's all sitting up there easy for me, so I'm not trying to balance it as well as tap them home. So just small, sharp taps in behind each keeper, because that's the thickest, meatiest part of the retainer housing. And there you are, there's the second O-ring creating a bit of torque or resistance as it goes into the cylinder. And look how easily, because I've cleaned it, it's easy to get it back home. If you don't clean it appropriately, that will cause you all sorts of grief because it'll want to kick as you put it back into place. So the one thing I need to put back in there now is the three shims. The three shims, remember, ensure that this comes out from the pump at six o'clock. If I miss one shim, it'll be round at three o'clock. If I miss another shim, it'll be round at nine o'clock. So we want it at six o'clock in relative terms. So, can I use Vaseline on these? Absolutely no problems at all. We're more inclined to use some anti-seize. So as you can see, they've given us adequate anti-seize to do this job. Now just smear the anti-seize over these, like so, to ensure that you've got a good coverage on there. Why do I do that? So when it comes to reassembly, I've got some chance of getting them apart. So all of this lubrication that we've put in this pump is washed out with our first solvent rinse 
prior to putting paint in the machine and ensuring the machine works. So I put a, the, a new ball in there, a seat. What do I need to do to check that it's okay? I'll put some oil in there and ensure that there's nothing coming out the bottom of it. There isn't, so that means that that ball is seating correctly. So that is a good repair and good to go back on the machine. So what you can do with that oil is just run it up around the top here to assist with lubrication. A little bit of Vaseline, like so. What's left of the anti seize you can squeeze it out of the tube, like so, and slide that around the thread. Now that is good to go back on there. So what we can do is, we need to put this back on there and not just put that back on the pump because it leaves this ring land exposed to damage. So what I'm inclined to do is, put this foot valve back on there. You don't have to tighten it up, just put it back on there. And you know that your shims are in there, the ball cage is in there, the ball is in there, the seat is in there, and all the O-rings are in there. So as far as this pump's concerned, we've rebuilt it. You need to hold this nut and undo this valve with the valve open because underneath this stem is a little tiny ball bearing and a tungsten carbide seat. Exactly the same as what I showed you here. It's a tungsten carbide seat and a little ball bearing. That is the same, so that's all that's in there. So if that's not working, you'll need to hold that nut and undo this and you'll find that there's a little ball bearing in there. It's got a, it's on the end of the stem of this rod. There's a tungsten carbide seat and underneath that tungsten carbide seat is a nylon sealing ring which goes in the bottom. So if at any stage this doesn't work, remove this whole body with this undone. Now, when you reinstate this, just make sure that you have this loose because if you tighten this up and then wind it in, you'll squash the ball into the seat and bust the seat. So you must have that open. So to ensure that we've done this properly, we know that the filter cavity is clean, we know that the cylinder cavity is clean, all our exhaust ports are clean, the threads are clean. If that doesn't work, remove it, repair it as I just mentioned. Make sure that this seal here for the taper of the connecting hose is nice and clean and concentric, and it is, so we're all happy with that. A little bit more anti-seize on this one here, like so. Probably a tad of anti-seize on this thread here to make sure that it's easy to reassemble. Now our pump is ready to be put back on the machine.